Straw Hut Media. Whoa, that's crazy. I say that all the time. That's crazy. Hey guys, it's Jordan Jones. Welcome back to the Jordan Jones podcast. In today's episode, we will be talking about messy breakups, tips for a successful relationship, how to shoot your shot, and how a 14-year-old girl is accidentally a school sexual predator. So let's get into it. This first confession is a long, crazy one. When I was a freshman in high school, I was messing around with one of my best friends at that time in the main quad area at our school. It was an area we would hang out between classes, but we were messing around and she was wearing a tube top without a bra. And somehow I ended up accidentally knocking her top down. Thought that that was it until the next day at school, I got called into the office and there were two policemen sitting in the office. Turns out someone had told the police that I came up behind her and pulled her top down on purpose. I had to write my statement sitting in a room with two police officers. I ended up getting suspended for three days from school, never really spoke to that girl again. This happened on a Thursday, and ironically, that night, we were having the team football dinner at my family's house. I learned a few months later that that girl, who was my really good friend, didn't deny the fact that I pulled her top down because her mom was upset with my mom because something my brother did to her older sister. We were all in high school together, and on my school record, it says I'm a sexual predator at the age of 14. Whoa, that's crazy. I say that all the time. That's crazy. Wow, that is just so unfortunate. It sucks that she didn't come forward, and that is like such a big deal for you. It's not something that is like a white lie that doesn't affect you. It's on your record. That's crazy. It's unlucky. I mean, it's wild. It sucks that no one else saw and could have been on your side for that. Yeah, that just sounds like that mom is evil. A little Karen. They're a Karen family. That's what they are. Obviously, it sucks and it's embarrassing for your top to, you know, fall down accidentally or on purpose. That girl obviously felt embarrassed and it is an accident. I mean, I trust you that you didn't just like walk up and pull her shirt down like they say you did. But I mean, this girl probably learned that she should always wear a bra, something else that's more secure. Yeah, it just honestly really sucks for you that that had to happen and go down. And I bet it was just so traumatizing to be 14 and into the office with two police officers and making a statement. You're like, what did I do wrong? I was literally, well, I mean, you know what you did wrong, but it's an accident and it's probably very traumatizing. And I'm sorry you had to go through that. It's not even really a funny story to look back on. It's honestly just like shitty. It's a horrible situation, and I'm sorry you had to go through that. I know that that girl probably still feels bad for not speaking up. That's that's a Karen family. <laughs> the girl's mom just being upset with your mom, it should not be a reason why your mom did or her mom did that to you guys if it's something that the brother and the mom and, and the older sister, like, it had really nothing to do with you two. Yeah, she was just being a Karen. If anything like this happens to you guys, just be honest. Don't ruin someone's life. Well, I'm not saying life. I mean, hopefully she, you know, gets into college and all of that. And it doesn't really, it's not like a real record. It's a school record, but still like always be honest because you don't know how it can affect somebody. So that's just what I have to say about that. But that's obvious. Okay. So I work at a coffee shop and I have a regular who comes in and I want to shoot my shot. Do you have any advice or what should I do? What can I do? Number one is making sure that they're not in a relationship. I feel like you'd be able to tell if you do like flirt and maybe they flirt back. You'd probably be able to tell if, you know, you're getting vibes that this person's in a relationship because then you don't want to continue with that. But say you know for sure that they're not in a relationship and you want to shoot your shot. Okay. So it's always nice to maybe pick up her drink for free. I remember like at my hometown Big B, I went through one time and the four girls working there were a fan of me. And so they could give away like a free drink an hour or something. So they chose like to give me that free drink. I just always remembered that. And that's like such a nice thing to do. I don't necessarily know if that's something you can do where you work, but 
that's a nice thing to kind of shoot your shot and hint at the fact that, you know, you're using your free drink or you're paying for her drink to be nice. That will get her attention. So start with that maybe. But you can always just, you know, when you hand the drink, you'd be like, you know, I really like your outfit or uh, what else is like a good compliment? Because you can't really say like you smell good, but every girl likes to hear that they smell good. I feel like that'd be a little weird because like, how are you going to like smell her? But if you get to that point, that is a good compliment to give. You can also just like do small talk. Oh, got your usual. Like you can be funny. You can write something on the cup. Oh, that's a good one. You can just say, have a good day smiley face. I know some people put their number, but I feel like that's just a little cringy. If you really like someone, I don't think you should do that. But oh, maybe they want to like, that's more of like the number thing. I don't think that that's good. I think you should maybe not do that until you're to a point where, okay, she likes me. I can feel it. Then it's like, okay, number time. So writing something on the cup aside from like your number, super cute and nice, even just a heart or I don't know, maybe like the name, just writing the name really cute would be nice. I'm trying to think of like more ideas for you. Maybe if like you have a break, you can like sit in the lobby. Maybe you could start like a more normal conversation. If you catch her and you're not working in the lobby, that's like a more organic, nice way. Maybe that's when you can say she smells good. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like shooting your shot is, is just like flirting, being funny, being yourself. Honestly, maybe she's just going to that coffee shop to see you too. You don't even know. So look your best every day. Be yourself. You'll know when the time is right to shoot your shot. So just be yourself. That's a really cute one though. So my friend group has started to get into things like drinking and smoking and I don't want to do those things but I don't want to lose my friends. I don't know what to do. I just noticed that they are all changing and they are different people than they were even two months ago. Oh that's really sad. You know people when they grow up and they're getting older or you know going to college everyone kind of does like change and it's really sad when you feel like you're the only one that kind of maybe hasn't. And it's not like a maturity thing or anything. If anything, it is like you are more mature and maybe content and happy with your life and how it's going so you don't need anything else. Obviously, you guys know that I don't drink or smoke if you listen to the podcast. I've definitely had this problem for a long time. As soon as like, you know, your 16, 17 year old friends start drinking, it is just like really sad because... I've basically always had friends that don't drink and smoke. And now within the past like year, maybe two, I kind of do. And it's hard for me to kind of understand like the difference and know that obviously like these friends like are the same and like we still do the same things, but obviously is sad. And especially when you've known someone for a really long time and then all of a sudden they kind of start doing this thing and then that's like the hobby. So the hobby's not like, you guys going to do something that you always would do or, you know, coming over at night and watching a movie. Now they want to go like smoke or they want to go to a party instead of what you're used to. You definitely can't like control people. But obviously, if you're worried about your friends or your relationship, you obviously have to say something just to put your feelings out there. It'll make you feel better. And especially if like you're worried about a situation, like say they're always out till 4 a.m. They're always blackout drunk at the club they're bringing home a, a girl if their life style is really affecting them then that's definitely something to bring up but at the end of the day you know people are going to do what they want to do and it sucks because i've been through that where i've i've lost people close to me because they change and you were that escape for someone and then they go to something else and then they don't need you anymore and it's definitely sad and heartbreaking and watching your friends or people close to you kind of change is really hard but most of my you know friends that do drink or smoke i feel like they're still they're still them I don't really have friends that like, go to clubs or anything. I remember my friend super close to me for my entire life. She knew that I didn't like drinking and I obviously don't want her drinking. And she was, let's say, underage at this point. And she had a Snapchat story where she would post all her like party videos and drinking videos. I would see those and I'm like, I can't even recognize her. This isn't her. I, I was really sad and concerned for her, scared that she was becoming someone she's not or, you know, this was going to be something that she continues. 
you know, everyone's in phases. So if someone's smoking, I just kind of like now wait for this to like phase out. And that's like what I did with my friend. But I texted her and I was like, hey, can you please take me off of that Snapchat story? I don't want to see that stuff. I don't want to see you like that. I don't really agree with that. I know you're at college and you're going to do whatever you want. So I just don't really want to see that. I feel like it helped her kind of understand that your real friends and the people who love you the most that care about you always want what's best for you. I know it's annoying when your friend or your girlfriend's like, you probably shouldn't be doing that as much or I don't really like that. I don't like this side of you. I'm not a fan of this. No, it's out of love. And at the end of the day or two years down the road, you're going to realize that that person was right. So don't get too lost in trying to be cool at school or with your friend group. Be yourself and stay true to yourself. And I feel like that's the way of life. <laughs> okay. My confession is that my boyfriend and I recently broke up and before we did, I went through his phone and found him talking to a bunch of girls. He never posted me on Instagram, but the day after he posted a photo of a girl kissing his cheek from a couple nights prior. It just makes me feel like shit and like he's embarrassed by me. Oi, 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 oi. So I feel like what you're trying to say is this photo of this girl kissing his cheek was when you were dating and all those messages is when you're dating. It's just really sad. I totally understand how you can feel embarrassed and you feel so low. I mean, you did nothing wrong. It just sucks because when a relationship falls apart and it's because of one person's actions. It just really, really sucks. And it's really hard to go through, you know, especially because say if that boyfriend was your everything and maybe your only friend, then you just feel like you lost everything. So the Instagram theory where if he doesn't post you, you know, he's hiding you. And when someone says like, oh, I don't post, but they do. It's just, like, oh, you're just trying to hide that person. And a lot of people will obviously just keep their relationship off of Instagram period but you know if it wasn't really like that and then all of a sudden it is you know you just have to watch out for that it's not good to just overly post your boyfriend on social media or your girlfriend but obviously making it known that you're in a relationship is totally normal and healthy and it's not like you have to post them all the time once a month or whatever it'll just be good for your girlfriend or your boyfriend to okay like yeah i'm still here like that's mine like and you want to like show them off but you also want to keep your relationship private so there is a very happy medium that you have to find in your relationship but with this he's never posted her and now he's just posting this say random girl that he's obviously not in a relationship with you'd hope because you guys just broke up it's clearly just to like make you upset or make you jealous. And it's so sad that he never posted you and he's just posting this girl. Like that would just make me more upset than even like the talking to other girls thing. Cause that's like real that this girl is really kissing his cheek and he's really posting it. And like he can just, he's probably just like talking to whoever he wants. I mean, hopefully it wasn't anything more than that, but it's just upsetting. It's depressing. It's really hurtful. I know Instagram's not everything, but it means a lot to your girlfriend to have one little picture every once in a while. And I think that it's also just like a reassurance thing and it's stupid and it shouldn't be, but clearly she's like, oh, he never posted me and now he's posting this girl. So I didn't mean anything to him. And he was really trying to hide me because he's talking to all these girls. So it is just a recipe for disaster and no one wants to just open Instagram a day after you could break up and see that, that is not cool. So this guy is just so not it. He is, I could say a lot of things about this guy and I will, I will protect my girls, but please never talk to this guy again. I mean, I hope that you are not going to get roped back into that because that's a mess and not something that you deserve. You are worth so much more than that. Someone will love to show you off and you will never feel embarrassed and they will compliment you. So that was not the one. The only thing good about that is that it ended and you know, so you have some type of closure and it's horrible closure, but at least you have something in your mind to kind of like hate him and move on. You definitely deserve more. And I hope, hope you understand that. So my advice to you is to obviously act like that man is just not even in your life anymore. Peace out and go have a girl's day. Go see your mom. Go eat your favorite food. 
you have to have to know that you just have to be confident in this moment. You have to understand that that person is literally not okay, is nothing that you did. You did nothing wrong. So go eat your favorite dinner, go get your favorite dessert. Do not stalk him and do not text him back. That is it for today's episode. If you guys want to be featured in the next episode with your confession, questions, advice, concerns, make sure to send an email to jordan at strawhutmedia.com and make sure to listen to us on all streaming platforms or watch the video version on YouTube. I will see you guys next week with a brand new episode. Bye. You've been listening to the Jordan Jones Podcast. Jordan's passion is to inspire, relate, and give you that much-needed one-hour escape from life's everyday struggles. Your family, and we're so glad you're here. Make sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, find us on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at Jordan Jones. J-O-R-D-Y-N. This production is brought to you by Straw Hut Media, hosted by Jordan Jones, produced by Ryan Tillotson, edited by Daniel Ferreira, additional production help by Carolyn Mendoza, Ali Ahmed, and Samir Gonchi. Keep shining bright like the diamond you are, and see you next time on the Jordan Jones Podcast.